formula for calculating the determinant of any matrix the major diagonal minus the minor diagonal what it means is the major diagonal here is one and what two so to find this determinant you are going to have one multiplied by two minus the minor diagonal is three multiplied by minus one you have three multiplied by minus one at the end of the day you have one now minus minus three is what sorry two i mean two plus what three and then you have five so the determinant of this matrix is five is that okay yes, is that okay yes. now you must not misinterpret this minus here with this minus here you must not do that mistake this minus that you're having as a coefficient to this one is different from this minus here so that this minus here will always affect the sign of the number here there are instances where you also have a three by three matrix now let's take for instance you have um, i'm just trying to give you a recap of what you have done before before i do some things now let's say you have a matrix 0 1 4 2 minus 1 3 3 4 8 for you to find the determinant are we together now in this kind of scenario you have you employ a different methodology to solve it what do you do you have a major diagonal and you have a minor diagonal but what you first of all do is to split this down into fractions into smaller fractions of matrices so in this kind of scenario the sign that is attached to each of these uh, numbers is very important you have plus sign here you have minus you have plus 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 take note of these signs here so that in taking the matrices the determinant of this first of all you pick this plus zero the determinant is zero one four two minus one three three four eight this is a symbol for determinant this is equal to you pick this zero here you have zero multiplied by now you pick this you pick this guy here are we together in other words as you are picking this zero here all this is cancelled all this is cancelled you work with this so you have minus one times eight minus three times four you have this then going to the second number which is what one the sign here is minus so you have minus one into then all this row is cancelled and all this column is cancelled so you pick this and you pick this which becomes two times eight you get the point so you have two times eight minus three times three is what you close it then the sign here is what plus you have plus four into now all this is cancelled all this is cancelled so you pick this guy that is here so you have two times four minus one times three are we following are we following yes. you're not following right yes. all right let me do it again as i want to re-explain if i catch you talking without listening i will send you out as i want to take my time to re-explain to you i said when you are having a three by three matrix or a four by four matrix or five by five matrix the way you solve it is to split it down into smaller matrices 
for you to be able to get their diagonals multiplied by themselves. Now, what I say is that this is a three by three matrix. And this sign that I hear is very, very important to your calculation. These signs that are here. Not that you're going to write them out physically, but it should be in your memory. Now, and I say this is a symbol for determinant. So that when you pick this zero that is here, which is this guy, everything here is cancelled. All these guys will go since you pick the zero. Are we together? You have one and then you have four. So when I pick the zero, I have minus one times eight, which is this guy that is here, minus three times four, which is this guy here. The second sign on this is minus, which is minus one, which is this guy here, multiplied by, when I pick this one here, all this guy will go, and this guy will go. Do you understand? I'll be left with this guy. So that I have minus 1, 2 multiplied by 8, minus 3 multiplied by 3. Are we following? Yeah. So let me write it back. Then here I have minus 1, and I have 4. The same thing applies to the third one. When you pick this 4, these guys will go, and these guys will go. Is that okay? So you have four times this. So this is the same thing as when I multiply zero to all this, it tends to work zero minus one into two times eight is what? 16 minus nine is what? Seven. Seven. I have seven plus four into two times four is what? Huh? Eight plus three is what? 11. This is equal to 0 minus 7 plus 4 times 11 is what? Which is equal to what? 37. So this is the determinant for a 3 by 3 matrix. Are we together? Are we together? All right. Now to, to test your understanding of this, let me expand this matrix and then allow you to give me the determinant. Can I clean? Please be fast. Thank you. Have you finished?
Find the determinant of this matrix. This is a four by four matrix. Very quickly. Find the determinant quickly. Just solve and give me the answer now. Have you all finished? Have you finished? What is your answer? Those of you talking your lives out, have you finished? All right, let me give you a clue. Look up. Look up. This is how you do it. When you pick this one, all this we go, all this we go. You will find the determinant of this 3x3 three three matrix. When you pick this one, all this we go, all this we go. You will find the determinant of these guys. So, you first of all reduce to 3x3 three three matrix, then also reduce to 2x2 two two matrix. Do you understand? Yes, 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 yes. All right, this is it. If you are to find the determinant of this, you have one, zero, one, four, minus one, two, minus one, three, five, three, four, eight, and then one, three, minus six. Seven. <laughs> this is the same thing as you pick this one that is here. 
you will take the determinant. When you pick this one, this one multiplied by the determinant of 2 minus 1, 3, 3, 4, 8, 3 minus 6, and 7. Are you getting it? Then minus 0 multiplied by the determinant of minus 1, minus 1, 3, 5, 4, 8, 1, 3, sorry, 1, minus 6, and 7, plus 1 multiplied by the determinant of what? Minus 1, 2, 3, 5, 1, 7, minus 4, multiplied by minus 1, 2, minus 1, 5, 3, 4, 1, 3, minus 6. Are you understand now? So, because you already know how to find the determinant of the 3 by 3 matrix. Is that not so? So when you find this determinant by the previous uh, example, using the previous example, when you find the determinant of this, you multiply it by 1. Find the determinant of this, multiply it by 0. Find the determinant of this, multiply it by 1. Find this determinant, multiply it by 4. Do this uh, evaluation and you get your final result. Is that okay? Is that okay? All right. Write it to this point and I expect you to go and complete it. Also, I want to pick some matrix questions here in line with what you have done previously from this your jump questions and then show you how those things work. Can we continue? Can we continue? Huh? All right. As an example, another example, find the value of K. Find the value of K if, find the value of K if, find the value of K if, Find the value of K if this guy here is equal to this guy. Can we all attempt this? Hope is very simple. Yeah, you go and complete that one at home. Yes. The, this other one is uh, is just evaluation you need to do. Uh, just do it uh, at home. Just do it at your convenience. Can we all attempt this? It's very simple, right? What's the value of our k? Yeah, I think you want to help us with that, right? Who will help us solve this? Who will help us solve this? Oh, yeah, come, you. Zo. Zo. Oh, yeah, come here. Come now. You don't even know why I'm calling you. Just come. Just confess. No, just confess. I didn't tell you what you do. Just confess. Just come first. Just come. Just come first. Ah. Come. So. Take. 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 Your mouth. Your only your mouth. Come here. 
Come and solve this. Oh yeah, solve this. The way your mouth is talking, let your hand do the talk. There's nothing here for calculator. What are you calculator to do here? What are you calculator to do here? For the purpose of exam, hope you know how to use this calculator to find your to solve your matrices. Matrices. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Huh? It's very important. For the sake of your exam, this is a very short way that you can get your direct answer in seconds. Do you understand? Uh -huh. So kindly learn how to use this. It's very simple and it's straightforward. <laughs> Have you finished? Who can continue from where she stopped? Mm -hmm. Are you call? Yes. You on 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 on, on uh, yellow call. Come, come and continue. Okay, you're not writing math. Okay, no wonder. No wonder. You guys are the ones that are disturbing the class because you feel you are not writing math. You are just here making your. If you know you are not writing math, let me see your hand. If you are not writing math, please, can you give us some space? Because you'll be here and making your noise. And please, if you are not, if you are not doing math, go back. Those that are doing math, come to the front. Let's discuss well. Huh? If it's just for learning, because you are the one considering the news as in the class, just go behind. Those that are doing math, come to the front. Who else will come and try? You. Yo, I'm a boyfriend. Oh, yeah, come. Come. It's only I'm a boy, you know how to do, ba. All right. Let's put our hands together for her. At least she tried. Yes. So, what, what happens here is, this is one of your questions in the jam. And all your questions carry equal marks. Do you understand? Now, the first thing you look at is what is the bracket like? Is it a modulus sign or is it just a coily bracket or it's a square bracket or it's just a normal bracket? Now, you see, discover that this has a modulus sign. And immediately you are seeing a modulus sign, it means it's a determinant. Do you understand? It means it is a determinant. So what they are saying is that the determinant of this matrix is equal to 23. So you now apply the method of a determinant on this guy here. So by picking out minus 2, multiply by 1 times minus 1, then 2 and k, this guy here, then you have minus 1, you pick this matrix, you pick this uh, row, and you pick this, you pick this column, you pick this column, and bring them here. The third one, you have plus one. Then you pick these guys here and bring them here. The next thing that you have is minus two multiplied by one times minus one. Is what? Minus one. Then two times k is what? 
you have minus 2k 2k bar <laughs> minus 1 into 2 times minus 1 minus 2 1 times k minus k then i have plus 1 into 2 times 2 is what 4 minus 1 times 1 1 this is and we are saying everything equals 23 what you have is minus 2 multiplied by minus 1 okay when we expand this bracket we are going to have 2 plus 4k minus plus 2 plus k plus 4 minus 1 right plus 4 minus 1 everything is equal to 23 so we now collect like terms collect like terms we now have 2 plus 2 plus 4 is what minus 1 7 so i say 7 4k plus k is what plus 5k everything is equal to 23 then we collect our like terms again we now have what 5k is equal to what 23 minus 7 which is equal to 23 minus 7 is what 16 this implies that k is equal to what 16 over 5 now simplifying it down further what will you have 2 number 1 as this make sure that make sure that your simplification is very correct make sure it's very very correct do you get it to this point all right all of you as an exercise as an exercise do this for me quickly if P is equal to if P is equal to if P is equal to capital P if capital P is equal to please go ahead there where Okay, minus two. This one? No, no, yes, yeah. Okay. Sorry, there's a correction. Sorry. This first one? Minus two. One times. One times minus one is what? minus one two times k 
2k. It's 2k minus. That is the major diagonal minus the minor diagonal. So, like, when they broke that space, like, that case is not supposed to be where? It's not supposed to be where? Do you understand it? You get it? See, this is a major diagonal. That is the product of the major diagonal minus the product of the minor diagonal. It's always going to be yes, it's minus, and that minus, yeah, this one too. This time is this, so yeah. So two times minus one is minus two, minus k times one is minus k. You get it right now. If p is equal to x plus three, x plus two x plus 1 x minus 1 evaluate evaluate x if p is equal to 10 is equal to minus 10 quickly for all of you that are going to do jump you must solve this now you must solve this last work now for all of you that are going to do jam, do a uh, mass in your jam. Is that why you are my class? Have you all finished? What's the value of your X? Somebody said X equal to minus five. Somebody said it's five. Go ahead. You are you doing mass in your jump? Huh? You are you doing mass in your jump? Huh? Okay, so why egg? I will do this and then give you a last uh, a last work on metrics and then leave you to go and explore 
other stuffs for yourself why i dive into something uh, something else they already told you they already told you that the determinant of p is equal to minus 10. what it means is the determinant x plus 3 x plus 2 x plus 1 x minus 1 is equal to minus 10. So what you have here is go ahead minus you got minus minus 2.5 minus 5 all right we have four options here let's solve and see what's correct and then you will check uh, where you made your error this is the same thing as major diagonal x plus 3 multiplied by x minus 1 minus x plus 2 multiplied by x plus 1 everything is equal to minus 10 when you expand this out expanding it out you have what x squared x squared minus x 3x minus 3 minus x squared plus x minus x minus 2x minus 2 all is equal to minus 10 do you know how come about all these minus this minus is affecting all of them this guy here is affecting all of them so we can have this x squared to go with this x squared right at the end of the day we have minus x plus 3x is what 2x right minus 2 you have 2x minus 3 minus x minus 2x minus 2 equal minus 10 i can still have this to go with this is that not so at the end of the day i will have minus 5 is equal to sorry minus 5 minus x is equal to minus 10. you say what minus 3 minus 2 is minus 5 minus x is minus 10. so that my x minus x is equal to minus 10 plus 5 minus x is equal to minus 5 x is equal to what 5 is what i got it right good so this is it it's very simple there's no magic about it so the next one you're going to explore this is the basic of it you also have the inverse of a matrix i believe you know how to play around the inverse you also have the adjoint of a matrix the uh cofactor of a matrix and how to play around them is that okay now do you have why uh for those of you doing why do you have why past questions on maths eh? you don't have try to get one so that any question at all that is relating to all the things you're doing as we are treating the topics we are also attending to the question so that you can have a better understanding and before i leave this uh, topic you are familiar with multiplication of matrices right yes, how to multiply metrics how to add them and all of that is that okay yes, is that okay yes, now can i have something like this 
One, two, three. Three, three, two. Multiply by two. Please look up. What kind of matrix is this? This is a two by three matrix. What kind of matrix is this? Multiply, then what will you have? Multiply, then what will you have? Yes. Multiply this guy. This guy and this guy. What was your result? What will you have? If you multiply this matrix, what will you have? What's the result? What's your answer? What's your answer? Huh? What's your answer? I like it the way the class is quiet. What's your answer? All right, let me save you the stress. Let me save you the stress. The two matches cannot be multiplied. It cannot be multiplied because of dimension irregularities. Please listen to what I'm telling you. Because of dimension irregularities, it cannot be multiplied. So you don't need to stress yourself. A 2 by 3 matrix cannot multiply a 2 by 2 matrix. It's not possible. This is why. This is how you do matrix multiplication. Rows multiply columns. Rows multiply columns. So the number of rows here must be equal to the number of columns here. Do you understand? For this matrix to be able to multiply, I must have, let's say, two here and let's say one here. So the number of rows, the number of elements on each of the row must be equal to the number of elements on each of the columns. That is when they can multiply. Is that okay? Please. Now, and if I take this matrix this way, and I put it as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now, can this multiply? Can this multiply? It can't multiply. Because this, this is the number of row. The number of elements on the row here is what? Two. The number of elements on this column is what? Three. The dimension must be the same before they can multiply. So you must understand the conditions or the criteria for you to multiply matrices, for you to add them, for you to subtract them. Is that okay? All right. Can we move on? Yes, there is a, a particular topic I want to just introduce you to 
today because that topic is very, very fundamental for your physics, it's fundamental for your chemistry and some of your other uh, courses, including biology. So I want to just give you an introduction, a background of that topic today, and that is calculus. I want to just introduce you to it because, young man, I've been noticing you since. Do you have a problem? <laughs> it's like, it's like your body is. <laughs> it's like something is biting you. <laughs> I've been noticing you since you have not. You are, you are unstable. Why are you double-minded? Why are you restless? Why are you unstable? <laughs> it's hunger, right? <laughs> I've been noticing the guy since he has been very unstable. You know, you know, you, you, you know, yeah, you know these children these days. Children these days, what they do is by the time they mistakenly okay, let me not say it. I won't say it. I won't say it. All right, be very attentive now. We are doing something very, very fundamental here. So be very, very attentive. Now, I want to look at calculus. And the few things that I'll be introducing you to is, one, the concept of limit. The concept of limit is very important in calculus. The concept of differentiation. And the concept of integration. These three topics at your level, it's very, very important you have it at your fingertips because there is no science work you will do without calculus. It's not possible. If you are going for civil engineering, if you are going for electrical engineering, if you are going for physics, if you are going for mathematics, if you are going for chemistry, you must play around calculus in all of in all works of your endeavors. That is why it's fundamental you have the foundation. Now, when we are talking about the limit, when you close from here, where will you be going to? Home, right? Yes, sir. You'll be going home, right? Yeah. Now, when you get home, not all. okay, not all, but not okay, so we'll go to your girlfriend places. All right, I want to illustrate something for you. When you live here and you start going home, you start going home, you begin from here, then you make the first step, you take the second step. Now, as you are taking the step towards your house. Where are you approaching? Huh? That is as you are going, and it's house you are going to. Where are you approaching? You are approaching your house. Is that not so? You start from here, and you are approaching. You are getting closer and closer and closer and closer to your house. Is that not so? In other words, your house is your limit point. Your house is your limit. And you are getting closer and closer and closer to your house. Is that okay? Yes, sir. That is the general idea of a limit first. But before we talk about a limit, I will also tell you about what a function is. Because you take the limit of a function. Now, what is a function? 
Because everything we'll be doing in calculus is all around function. We'll be differentiating a function, integrating a function, taking the limit of a function, and what have you. Now, what is a function? We say a function is a mapping. A function is a mapping or correspondence. A mapping or correspondence or transformation is a mapping or a correspondence. That maps that maps you see sometimes i sometimes i imagine where where we imbibe the culture of our educational system you know you are the one you are here you are aspiring to be like the white am i right you are aspiring to be like the white you are doing everything you can to jack to run and go and stay abroad among the whites for them to enslave you right now now let me tell you something again about the whites as small and as little as their children can be immediately they are enrolled in school they maintain the highest level of educational culture in their classes they pay keen attention to their teacher to get what the, their teacher is saying and then ask critical questions but you that wants to go there to go and be their slave oh the only thing you know how to do here is to be running your mouth and be making noise and be saying all manner of things when when le uh, lesson is going on question you will not ask listen you will not listen oh yeah finish let us carry our bag and go on the day of the exam you will start looking for Epo. right is that looking for expo oh yeah come and write for us come and i know i know, I know majority of you you are, you are looking for centers where yeah. there are magic centers <laughs> right and i keep telling you people listen listen and i keep telling you people that until you are personally determined to create a change in your life there can never be a change that is the re this culture is one of the reasons why we have thousands upon thousands of professors in this country thousands upon thousands of doctors in this country thousands upon thousands of so many cadres of academics in this country and yet we are still not producing the tiniest of things and yet we don't produce cars yet we don't produce bicycles we don't produce toothpicks we we import everything which is the reason why dollar is increasing but the whites that want to emulate the whites have ideas of production 
as they are going to school, they are going to school to learn how to use their ideas to bring out something to society. But all that you know how to do here is noise, 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 girlfriend, boyfriend, uh, TikToking, uh, chatting, WhatsApp, and all manner of things. Huh? Uh, okay. They are also telling me the ones that I also know how to do very well here. So, this is the council. This is the council. You are not doing anybody favor by paying attention when your teacher is teaching and you get the knowledge you require. You are not doing anybody favor. Neither are you doing your parents favor. You are doing yourself favor. Do you understand? This, uh, there is a girl. That girl, as at November last year, she was eight years, eight years old. Now, that girl is a very, very small girl. Now, there was a world, an African symposium that was held in Asorok as of last year. Do you know the work of this girl? She plays a flute. Do you understand? She's a trumpeter. A small eight years girl. Now, in that gathering, you had, we had about, we had about six presidents of different countries, African countries. Then we had more than, we had more than 15 ambassadors of other countries. The same way you have different categories of ministers. This, uh, the president, uh, as at that time, it was uh, Buhari, Mohamed Buhari. Okay, sorry, around uh, March, April. So it was Buhari. Buhari had a delegate in that symposium. This woman, uh, Abike Dabira, have you heard of her name? The uh, DG of uh, Nigerians in Diaspora Commission. She was the one that uh, spearheaded, that chaired the meeting. Now, this girl of eight years, she was the one that was playing the national anthem with a trumpet in that entire symposium from beginning to the end. Now, this girl was taken to, on the day of the dinner, the dinner night, she was specially honored in Transcorp Hilton. Now, this small girl at age eight, she has written, she has been able to write her name on the wall of fame. Now, why did I tell you that? Why I told you that is that as young people, as young people, we have so much potentials in us to become whatever we desire to become. But when you don't use those potentials, when you don't nurture those potentials through the appropriate knowledge, at the end of the day, you will just grow like that and you turn to something else that you don't like. So calm down very well, listen to your lessons, ask questions when necessary, and develop yourself. Now, let me continue my definition of a function. We said a function is a mapping. All correspondence, all transformation that maps a domain onto a co-domain. That maps a domain a domain, say X. Say X. <laughs> onto Sam, Alpha. A code domain, say why. Why? Say why. Why? Yeah, say why. Why? Say why. Say why. So this 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 X here 
in a function there are there are basic things you have every function must have a domain every function must have a domain you have a domain you have a codomain you also have a range i know you must have done that in mathematics in your statistics okay no that is zero that of mathematics that is different now you have a range you have a codomain you have a domain now this x here represents your domain the y represents your codomain or your range as the case may be this is what it implies naturally the domain of every function is always is always the real line the domain of every function is always the real line when i say the real line i mean something like this this is a real line now this real line we call it x on your cartesian plane you have the y axis the x axis normally the x axis is always the real line that is your natural real numbers you all know what real numbers are right you know what are, are integers uh natural numbers integers real numbers complex numbers you all know what they are am i correct now your real line your real line are numbers from negative infinity to positive infinity this is your real line now it is always the domain x the domain is always the real line from negative infinity to positive infinity when you are talking about integers integer starts from one to infinity positive infinity it doesn't have negative they are talking of natural numbers it doesn't start from uh, infinity but when you are talking of real numbers it begins from negative infinity to positive infinity so this is your real line it is always the domain of every function are we together are we together now why your codomain is always your y axis or z axis as the case may be depending on the plane that you are working with now if you are if you are working in space now there, there are two quantities you have space and you have time if you are working in time if you are working in time you have what is called the x and y axis you are working in time but when you are working in space you have multi-dimension that is you have the x y and z axis that is the spatial component more huh? more yeah there are more dimensions you can have up to n dimension you can have up to one dimension two dimension three dimension four dimension up to n dimension but the more the dimension the complex the problem becomes so in most cases real life problems are restricted to three dimensions that is when you are working at, working in space for those of you that will be going to engineering you'll be doing a lot a lot of work in space that is where you're going to play around your x y and z axis that was one of the reasons why you had in your metrics you have the i j k in your vector you have the i j k the x y z and all those stuff so here you have the domain and here you have and here you have the code domain please take note of what i'm trying to explain to you yes, sir. now on this real line which is the domain there are fractions of your x let's take for instance you start from minus infinity up to positive infinity and here you have zero then you can uh you can dissect this domain into different fractions you can have here to be one you can have here to be two you can have here to be three you can have here to be minus one minus two and minus three up to negative infinity up to positive infinity so you can have a domain of x x is equal to this domain minus three minus two minus one zero one two three you can have this as your domain you know you have done quadratic equations right when you want to plot your graph 
Yeah. When you want to plot your graph, they always, they always give you x values, tell you to find the, the y values, and then plot x against y. Am I correct? Now, those x values are your domain. Why the y values are your co-domain? You get the point? Yes, sir. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Good. So, when we are talking about a function, that's what we are saying. A function is always... The co-domain is always a function of the domain. Yes, go ahead. Five minutes more. Five minutes more? Let's say to 12, right? Let's say 9 to 12. I thought it's 9 to 12. Let's say 3 hours, right? minutes that I have, let me just say something here. Let me say something here. Then I will use you to go. When you come back, I now go on the limits, the division and the integration quickly. Now, please listen. Listen. Hello. Now, when you have a domain, let's say, for instance, the values of your x is equal to this domain minus two minus one one and two the value of your y which is your code domain is a function of x in other words y is equal to when you see f of x it means function of x in other words x is dependent sorry y is dependent on x you already know what is independent and dependent variables. Am I right? So, x is depending on y. That is why we say y is a function of x. This is equal to f of minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, and 2. A function of this domain. Are we together? Go ahead. Why, how do I know y is not equal to x? Y is not equal to x because y is a codomain. Y is a codomain and x is a domain. Oh, is that not what you're asking? Yeah. Yes. Now, he's asking a very important question. He said, if x is equal to minus 2, that means y is equal to what? Minus 2. That is not correct. Are you getting it? Now, let me, let me, let me, let me give you this illustration. You have x here, and you have y. You have 0, you have 1, you have two, you have three. Are we together? Yes, sir. Here, you have zero, you have two, you have four, and then you have six. Please answer me this question. Yes, sir. What is the connection between Y and X given this data? Zero. 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 What connects Y to X given this data? No. no. What is the connection between X and Y given this data? Y is equal to 2X. Y is equal to 2X. Because, because this is X, right? If you multiply 0 by 2, you have zero. If you multiply by one by two, you have two. If you multiply two by two, you have four. If you multiply three by two, you have what? Six. It therefore means that the rule or the mapping or the transformation or the function of this of this uh, equation of this problem is y equal to two x. Two x is the rule. You get to the point. 2x is a rule defined over this domain. So the function y is equal to f of x is equal to 2x given this data. You, did you, do you understand what I'm saying? So this guy here, 
this guy that you have here all right sorry. this guy that you have here is the rule is the mapping is that okay is the guy man thank you so as soon as we come back please let's be sensitive to the time is that 15 minutes right please in 15 minutes time please return back we have a lot of work to do thank you yeah the rule this guy y is equal to f of x y the codomain or the independent variable independent variable independent variable and this guy here the x independent sorry de sorry dependent variable and independent variable so y is depending on x to have its value that is the meaning of y is a function of x y cannot have a value of its own without x and since y x is the ogre that is why we call the x the domain domain means the landlord the boss man is the one that did the organic product of them all is the one that decides the value that y takes are we together that is why we always represent y as a function of x the code domain can be another terminology it's possible as you are doing your work you may also have w equal to f of s you may have something like this this is also a function the keyword here is this f here means a function of s so in place of this x s is the domain y w is the codomain so it can take on the independent variable can take any alphabet why the dependent variable can also take any alphabet it's not composite that it must be y and it must be x but what is most important is this f which is a function are we together now examples of functions that you have examples of functions include includes one y is equal to f of x or let me say y is equal to 2x y is equal to 1 plus x 3 y is equal to x squared plus x plus 1 4 y is equal to x raised to the power 3 minus x squared plus 1 number 5 y is equal to exponential x number 6 y is equal to cos x plus sine x number 7 y is equal to log x or lin x now these are different kinds different examples of function i will use these examples to explain to to you the different types of functions that we have now if you look at this function here you have y is equal to 2x yeah go ahead dear sir i'm going forward to this thing here now mm -hmm. yes like you said from initially you said y is the code you made where x is the main code. yeah so does it mean that there must be a calculation of x you must solve for x you don't solve for x but you solve for y, y. you solve for y but like how like you solve for y but it can also come out outside it can also like how like they can also be uh, aside from all what you mentioned here correct yeah, yes yes they can also be other ones yes they are multiple life 
physical sciences generally is all about functions. The function that was used to produce this wood here is different from these ones. The cars that are produced, it's functions that are used to produce them. Do you understand? The bicycles that are produced, the generators that are produced, these handsets that we are having, these wristwatches, they are functions. Now, in sciences or in practicality, we call it models. Have you heard the word model? Right? Those models are functions. And it is that function that is the guiding principle or the operational principle or the manufacturing principle for that particular equipment. You understand the point? So you can have multi-million functions. And the functions come in diverse, in diverse ways. So now look at this function here. What is the what is the degree of this function? What is the highest power of X here? The highest power is what? It is of degree what? One. Right? This kind of function, we'll call it a linear function. Functions that have the highest power of the independent variable to be one, we refer to it as a linear function. Is that okay? Then, the same thing applies with this. The highest power is one. So this is a linear function. This is a linear function. Now, here you have the highest power to be what? Two. This kind of function is called a quadratic function. You call this a linear function. Linear function. You call this quadratic function. Now, quadratic function from degree 2, 3, 4, 5 upwards up to n, we call it polynomial function. Are we together? Polynomial function. So, quadratic fun uh, functions, that is degree 2, degree 3, degree 4, degree 5, all of them will categorize them as polynomial functions. Is that okay? Yes, now, you have quadratic, you have a polynomial function. You have a polynomial. Then here, you have what is called an exponential function. You have an exponential function. Here you have a trigonometric function. A trigonometric function. And then you have the log function, the logarithmic function. Now, there are different kinds of functions. But for your level, I'll leave you with these simple, simple ones. Is that okay? All right. Have you written that? Write that quickly. Let me clean there. Can we go ahead? Can we go ahead? All right. These are different examples and uh, types of functions. Let's play around with some of these little, little functions. I don't know what 
Now, I already told you that I already told you that functions are defined functions are defined hi <sighs> defined over a domain and we all know that it's the domain of real numbers now the domain here we know that it is x is that not so now this function is approaching a value as this domain as this domain are being used for this value are being mapped as they are being mapped is approaching a value that value at which is approaching is what you call the domain is what you call the limit point the limit the value at which the function is approaching over the domain is called the limit point let's take for instance on this real line this real line here let's say we'll call it 2x and beginning from the domain zero up to three now the first point on y let's say y is equal to two of zero this two of zero means two multiplied by zero is equal to what zero then y of one this one is y of zero it is equal to two of one which is two multiplied by one right which is equal to what two then y of two is equal to what two of two which is equal to what four then y of three is equal to what two of three which is equal to what six we discover that this value this function beginning from zero is going to a value is approaching a value is approaching a value on the real line. But go ahead. Oh. Yes, it will continue to go. That is why we always. That is why there is always a limit. That is why there is always a limit. Now there are different kinds of limit. Limit as a function tends to social -so point. Limit as it tends to social -so point. Limit as it tends to infinity, limit as it tends to that. I can ask you the limit of this function, the limit of this function, the limit of this function 2x as x tends to. This is the, this is the symbol for tends to. As x tends to zero, what is the limit of this function? Are we together? Now, it is represented by this. It is represented like as this. Limit of f of x. You know f of x is equal to y, right? As x tends to 0. Are we together? Now, the limit of f of x as x tends to 0. What is the limit point? So, we can say that the limit of f of x as x tends to a number, some number, it might be 0, it might be 20, it might be 30, but to some number, let's call it a, is equal to some constant l. The limit point, the limit of the function f of x as x tends to a is equal to some number l. Let's take, for instance, the limit as x tends to 0 of 2x, which is this f of x, is equal to some number. How do we calculate it? It's very simple. You carry this 0, put it into this. It's equal to 2 multiplied by 0, which is equal to what? 0. It therefore means that your L is equal to what? 0. You can also have limit as x tends to 2 as x tends to 2 of 2x which is equal to what 2 multiplied by 2 and is equal to what 
4. So it therefore means your L is equal to 4. So what this implies, what this implies is that as the domain is growing on the real line, as the domain is growing, the function is approaching, is approaching 4, but it will never get to 4. You get the point? It will never get to 4, but it is going closer and closer and closer to 4. Okay, four is infinity. No, there's no infinity there. You got the point. When they say when they say a function is tending to a limit, it's approaching a limit. Not that it will get to that point, but it will keep going closer and closer and closer to that point. So you will keep solving, you will keep going, you keep going, you keep going, but not exactly that point. But you know that it cannot exceed that point. That is why we call it a limit point. Do you understand it, Ba? Good. So, so this is just a simple uh, example. You can also have a limit of a function as x tends to minus 1, as x tends to minus 1 of 1 plus x. You can have this function. This is the same thing as 1 plus minus 1. When you take this minus 1 and put it here, at the end of the day, you are going to have 0. So, as this function here, is, as x is tending to minus 1, y is tending to 0. On the domain, on this real line, this is what you are having. x is starting from 0 and is coming this way. Are we together? If you want to plot this graph, you want to plot this, this graph that we have here, it's just something like this. You have this your x axis and this your y axis, right? And this point here you have what? Zero. Here you have negative x axis and here you have negative y axis. So you are saying that this point here is what? Minus one. And here is what? One. We are saying that as x is going closer to minus one, as x is going closer to minus one, y is going closer to zero. You understand? As x is going to minus one, y is going to zero. This is the implication of this. As x is going closer to two, let's say two at this point. As x is going to two, y is going to y is going to four. Are we together? Then this is the way it will go. It will go up here, this point, come to this point, this way. This is their meeting point. So as x is going to 2, y is going to 4. This is what it implies. Eh? This other one is going to be the, the negative. It's going to be on the negative. Are we following? Yes, sir. Good. Where's my duster? So there are different methods that you can use to find a function. There are functions, there are functions when x is tending to a constant. When x is tending to a constant, there is a particular way to find that limit. When x is tending to zero, there is a particular way to find the limit. When x is tending to infinity, there is a particular way to solve it. Are we together? These different methods, you have it to solve for limits. When it, you are having uh, a, a domain tending to infinity, when you are having a domain tending to zero, when you are having a domain tending to a constant, there are different methods. The one that we just did is when a domain, when a domain is tending to a constant. Are we together? Now, when it's turning to infinity and when it's turning to zero, I don't know. Next time we are going to deal on that. Is that okay? Next time we'll deal on that and then uh, probably introduce you to uh, differentiation and integration. Because that is all you will need for your exam. Is that okay? And by the time you get to 100 level, a lot about calculus will be expounded for you. So for now, what you need basically is the knowledge you need to pass your exams. 
and then prepare yourself ahead of 100 level. Is that okay? Please ask me any question you want to ask me, and I will entertain all of them and answer you. Yes, go ahead with your questions. You don't have questions. Go ahead, please. Go ahead with your questions, please. Yeah, I'm listening. Infinity. Yes, there is. What are you doing, infinity? That is, this is positive infinity, negative infinity. Don't worry. You all know what they are doing, infinity. You will soon know. This is you saying that y is like just a function of y is a function is a function of some domain of some domain. What if the domain happens to infinity? The domain cannot be tending towards good. That is why I said limit as x tends to infinity of 2x you understand now yes at the end of the day you are going to have 2 times infinity and 2 times infinity will still give you infinity now what it implies is this for see please this type of function is linear it means as y as x is increasing y will also be increasing very simple just simple like this this is zero and this is your x so as x is increasing this way y is increasing so it's going up yeah go ahead um, in the beginning of the class you said there are different dimensions like say, yeah like, well, yeah okay. yes. so now in a situation where we see a question and it says z who do you mean not y or all three um variables and um Okay, at your level, nobody will give you that. <laughs> at your level, nobody will give you that. The, the, those ones that you are saying is they are advanced courses. You can't, you can't, <laughs> you can't even comprehend it now. So that is why Jam will not even bother you with those ones. Do you understand? When you are talking about when you are dealing with multi-dimensional play please let me explain something to you let me explain to you when you are dealing with multi-dimensional space is not at your level it's not even for 100 level 100 level don't even do multi-dimensional space it's those that are into core engineering from their 300 400 level they start doing multi-dimensional planes now but you ask a question what if please look up what if they Terminology there is not y. It's not component that it must be y and x. It can be w, it can be something else. But but the variables there will always be two. One must always be dependent, while the other independent. So it can take s, it can take l, it can take k, it can take m, whichever one it takes. But it must always comprise of a dependent and an independent variable. When you are talking about multi-dimensional or multiple variables, you are diving into partial differential equations, of which that one self, even 300 level or 200 level, you don't even do partial differential equation. You get the point? So don't bother yourself with those ones. You just need the basic understanding to pass your exams and then prepare yourself for 100 level, 200 level. Is that okay? The, the, okay, that basic, the basic on function of a function. Well, it, it's a hundred level course. Yeah, function of a function. But I don't know. I don't. I don't know if they set it for you in your jam. Is it in your jam? I don't think so. But if you have questions like that in your jam, then I will treat it with you. You get the point. A function of a function. They are all there. But there are some advanced knowledge I want you to just avoid for now. When you have, when you understand this basic and you get to school, you will understand it deeper by the time you get there. Is that okay? Uh -huh. Any other question, please? Any other question? All right. In the absence of no other question, I declare, okay. 
Yes, what does that make One minute. Differentiation, integration. You now we had the limit and the function and everything which is not can it be the same? No, no, no. No, this is it. This is it. The function is the baba of them all. Yeah. You are you are taking the limit of a function. You are differentiating a function. You are integrating a function. So the quantity that you carry out operations on is what you call the function. Eh? Yeah. Hey, you carry the one and put it here now. You have two times one. You understand? But this is, this one is just one particular method of finding the limit of a function. There are other ways. There are other methods of solving, depending on the question. Is that okay? So, in the absence of no other question, I declare mathematics class today ended. Thank you. <laughs>